That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Nope, the third film directed by Jordan Peele, which Universal is releasing July 22nd, 2022. I was very excited to see this movie. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and overall, I think it has a lot of interesting things to it. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, you know, this will be a spoiler-filled review, but this is an elevated creature feature that has a lot of peripheral motifs that I think make this... There are a lot of uh, intersecting conversations to be had about this film, which I liked. But yeah, I, but ultimately it's just a basic creature feature. Yeah. But then trying to describe it is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. So again, spoiler heavy. The movie is about an alien who has occupied this region called Aqua... Agua Dulce. Agua Dulce, which is like, I think, in the valley somewhere. It's north of Santa Clarita. I mean, sweet water. Okay. So the alien is like hiding in the clouds. So the story is kind of broken up between two sets of characters. One set is Daniel Kaluuya... And his sister, played by Kiki Palmer. OJ and Emerald. Their dad, played by Keith David, mm -hmm. ran um, Haywood's Hollywood Horses. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, they supply trained horses to film and TV sets. Mm -hmm. And then the only black owned business of, of, its of its kind. And we're also told that the first motion picture captured a black man on a horse. It was like a two second clip. And that black man happened to be Kiki and Daniel's great-great-great-grandfather. So that's cool. Okay. So they're there. Daniel, well, Keith Davis' character dies by getting like a nickel shot through his eye. And we find out that the, the, the random items that were falling from the sky are actually the alien having like a bowel movement. <laughs> So that's what killed their dad. The non-organic elements uh, that were attached to that, that, that are not digestible yeah. get shit out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Daniel, after his dad dies, he's out in the farmland and he sees like a UFO. And he tells Kiki and she's like, oh, well, you know what we have to do? We have to get the impossible shot, the money shot, the Oprah shot. If they can get a picture, like a real photo of a UFO, they'll be rich. Because it's also made clear that they're having financial problems since the dad died. Mm -hmm. Okay. They go to Fry's, which is like Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And this guy who I thought looked like if you mix Riz Ahmed with Zac Efron. That hair. Um, I thought he was cute. His, What's name, the his name is Angel, played by Brandon Perea of the OA. The OA? A Netflix series that you didn't watch. Oh. He sells them a bunch of like surveillance equipment. He goes to install it. He can tell right away that they're trying to find something in the sky and he's like all into like conspiracy theories and aliens. So he ends up like monitoring their cameras remotely. He sees something weird and then decides to come to their house and help them. The thing that he sees that's weird is that he's reviewing the footage for like an entire evening and he notices that the cloud motion, there's one uh, like bunch of clouds that never moves and then they all confirm that, yeah, that cloud's been there for like six months. So that's where the alien is living. Okay. There's another character played by Steven Yoon. Mm -hmm. And he's like a child actor mm -hmm. who was on a TV show about a chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. And this was back in like the 90s. We find out that one day on set, the chimpanzee like mauls two people. And little Steven witnessed it. Mm -hmm. Well, his name is Ricky or Jupe. Jupiter. But now he has opened up Jupiter's corral or ju claim. Jupiter's, Jupiter's claim. claim, which is like an amusement park adjacent to like an old west amusement. Park. Yeah. And it's adjacent to um, Haywood's Hollywood horses. And they actually know each other because Daniel has been selling his horses to Stephen piecemeal piecemeal because he needs money. But everything sort of converges because Stephen has also seen this alien mm -hmm. And he notices that every Friday at a certain time, the alien sort of makes an appearance. So Stephen decides to have something called the Star Lasso Experience because he wants to show off these aliens. So in total, there are like 40 people who come to this like show. And he says, you guys are in for a treat. An alien's going to come down. 
And that alien comes down and eats all 40 people. Mm -hmm. So that sort of is the catalyst for... Kiki had reached out to a famous cinematographer asking for his help. Whose character's name is Antlers Holst, uh, played by Michael Wincott of Alien Resurrection fame. Who has such an amazing voice. He has a great voice, yeah. Initially, he's like, hell no. But after the 40 people go missing at uh, Jupiter's claim, he reaches out to Kiki and says, I'll do it. He shows up. And then the final act of the film is they've come up with a very elaborate plan to lure the alien out so they can get a high def photo. Mm -hmm. They do it. With, but a, they, with a non-electrical camera. Which is a funny scene like we can talk about. But they do it, but the alien fucks up everybody. Like, kills the cinematographer, ruins all the footage, destroys the house. But Kiki's able to lure this alien to Jupiter's claim. And she releases a hot air balloon. Because the gag is, the alien will only attack you if you look, like, if it sees your eyes. Mm -hmm. So, she releases a hot air balloon that looks like Bob's Big Boy. And it has eyes. So, the alien attacks it and swallows it. And then the hot air balloon pops and kills the alien. And then there was like an old timey like Polaroid machine at the park. And Kiki was able to get one Polaroid of the alien. The end. There you go. Oh, there is so much going on. There's so much symbolism. So many recurring themes. I think we sort of noticed this in Us. Mm -hmm. Where just a lot of shit put together. A lot of really cool ideas. But they don't coalesce in a way that feels... As fulfilling as my appetite for the film was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> like the, the wow factor kind of seems diminished by maybe some pacing issues. Um, it, what, during the setup, I'm like, oh, this feels like early Spielberg to me. And then by mm -hmm. the time we realize what is in the sky, this giant portobello mushroom, <laughs> um, it's Jaws. It's, it's Jaws in space, in the atmosphere, it feels like. Uh, but also... Uh, M. Night Shyamalan specifically signs where all, yes. of, all of these things have meanings and um, uh, will come to be visited again later to, that are in interesting ways. The film opens with a Bible verse. From the book of Nahum. 3.6. Uh, the quote is, I will, or the, the scripture is, I will pelt you with filth. I will treat you with contempt and make you a spectacle. Mm -hmm. What do you think that means? Well, I think that uh, a large part of this film is about spectacle and about observing things and about, um, and I think you can even really relate that back to the title because that's, Nope is kind of Daniel Kaluuya's, OJ's uh, way of approaching this alien is he's just not going to deal with it, and that's how he realizes like by not looking at the alien, he's safe. He's safe. And uh, he has a line in there about how uh, every animal has rules and, and so do, so do humans. Um, and I think that's how this this chimpanzee Gordy uh, ties in, the, the, you know, these, these animals, even the horses that we use uh, for our own entertainment and performance can rebel against us. So I think maybe this creature is like on a, a higher up on the, it, 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 it has a better post on the hierarchy and, you know, can exact some kind of vengeance on us. I think that is a, a potential theme. We see Keith David, because there's a flashback to... Kiki, there's some animosity between Kiki and then, like, she has feelings about her dad and her brother. And we don't get a lot of backstory on them, which is part of my problem. I really want to know more about this family. Yeah. But we do get the sense that she feels a way about them because she had a horse named Jean Jacket, who she thought was hers. And then one day she sees that they're training this horse to get rid of it. So it won't be hers anymore. Like, it's going to be a working horse. Yeah, it was, it was sold to the uh, production of The Scorpion King. The Scorpion King. Sorry, but, we, but I brought this up because we get a flashback of young Daniel Kaluuya and young Keith David. And I thought the actor playing young Keith David looked like Tevin Campbell. Oh, <laughs> Tevin. The film is broken up into chapters, which are the names of some of the animals. So it's broken up into Ghost, which is like this white horse, Clover, Gordy, the chimpanzee who mauled the people, the actors, Lucky... A horse who kind of saves the day in the end. And then Jean Jacket, which is what they named the alien in the end. For her first horse that... Yes, and again, I think there's, they're setting up this thing where she relates... We, we find out... The, the, the chimpanzee Gordy pulls so much focus because it's so uh, horrific and, you know, really interesting. Yeah. That, that 
we don't get kind of an equal parallel with OJ and Emerald that we, we kind of need, which would maybe put put some weight behind Kaluuya's performance and the, the silences and the solemnity that he has. Anyhow, uh, she relates a story, though, where Keith David sold um, Jean Jacket and she says, he wouldn't look at me. You did. Where And that sets up kind of this dichotomy between nature and 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 humans in within this universe where human hu, humans want to be grounded by one another by being seen whereas nature's just, you know hitting back because they don't want to nature doesn't want to be looked in the eye and that even goes back to is it is lucky is the name of the horse that uh, in the early film production that Kaluuya is working on uh, kicks something really hard and he loses the job because the horse uh, looks upon, looks at itself in a reflection and those scenes reminded me of signs where it's like, oh, we realize that like the water everywhere, you know, like, eh, it was a little heavy handed to me. Okay. There were, there were three, specifically three scenes I thought were pretty scary slash creepy. Mm -hmm. So one of them is one night Daniel notices that like something is on in the barn. So he goes out there and a light has been turned on and like the sprinklers are running. So he turns it off and then walks away and then it turns back on again. And he looks back and then you see this figure in the corner stand up and it's an alien. Like your standard, like, you know, light bulb head, big eye thing. I thought that was creepy as hell. It is creepy, but then that's... A but then we realize... Red herring scene. We, we realize that those are kids dressed up as aliens and they're just paying him back because Kiki stole like a plastic horse from... Jupiter's claim and these are Steven Yoon's kids playing a prank on him mm -hmm. but it was very effective the next one is there's so much build up to Gordy the chimpanzee because the opening scene is we see Gordy on set and he's covered in blood and we see a body on the floor so we know something bad happened but when we finally see it it's pretty creepy and then the point because poor little Steven his character as a young boy is hiding underneath the table and, you know, we're like thinking, oh, God, the chimpanzee is going to get him. And the chimpanzee does see him, but the chimpanzee likes him. So he doesn't attack him. But when that chimpanzee looks at him, that shit was creepy. It's creepy, but there's also a mechanism used in there because the scene that they're filming at this, this chimp's birthday party, some balloons are released and one pops loudly. And, the, you know, for lack of a... I guess pun intended, the monkey goes ape shit. Uh, and then another balloon pops and then it's like he comes down to earth. But you see this small child do this fist bump thing with him, which was part of their gag in this series. And you get the sense that perhaps Jupiter thinks that he has some kind of special way of dealing with or being able to control That's an important nature. plot point because I think that's exactly what it's saying. Because when he does his little um, star lasso experience to bring the alien down, he tells the crowd that the alien, like, he's built a rapport and the alien trusts him. Kind of like Marsha Clark thought. So, oh. <laughs> Anyhow. Anyway, he, yes, I think that it's just there's so much emphasis on Gordy and the chimpanzee and Steven. And the only purpose it serves is to explain why his character would think that the alien would trust him. I felt like there was too much time spent on that. Spent on that. Ultimately, there is, but yeah. it's also I, I like the connection. That's what it feels kind of Spielbergian about it as well as this connection to cinema. Because um, in the setup in Jupiter's office, he's got the. I think he's supposed to be like Shia LaBeouf. He's, in he, holes. He's well, because before he was in holes, he was this kid in this hit TV series, right? He was. It, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Isn't know it that. even Steven? Oh, I didn't or, know that. Yeah, um, but then uh, there's a a poster for some other title movie, but it looks just like the poster art from Holes. And he comments about how that was his first movie. And Kiki goes, oh, whatever happened to the black kid in that? He was really good, which is kind of also similar to that. Uh, and of course, I like all of the other um, uh, places of homage that Jordan Peele puts in there. Like there's a very nice uh, poster art, uh, Buck and the Preacher, directed by Sidney Poitier. I thought the sound editing was really good. Uh, we saw it in the IMAX. Mm -hmm. And... 
It's also kind of creepy that this creature is eating humans and we hear the humans screaming. We get a shot. And the shot. creature screams. We get a shot, kind of like in Arrival, where they go up. Yeah, and, 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 and then we get a shot of like the creature eating people and you can see and hear like their bones being crushed and blood coming down. That was very effective. Oh, I didn't get to finish the three... And it looked like the inside of an orifice. I didn't get to finish the three scary scenes. Oh. My final uh, thought was... Towards the end, when the after the alien eats the forty people at the Star Lasso experience, the alien shits out all the like non digestible things over Kiki and Daniel's house, mm -hmm. and it looks like it's raining blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that looked really good, and it was really creepy. that's a very effective scene. But then, and I don't mind that it kind of looks like a flying saucer at first. It, it, there, there's some playful imagery with that. But then towards the end, in the denouement, the alien. Um, unfolds itself that looks like a big jellyfish in the sky or like a like, like a big sailboat sail yeah and it, that, that's been ripped apart even a little anime looking and yeah. i didn't i thought that took away uh, a little bit of the menace from it you didn't like the character but i really liked the resume looking guy I, I liked his energy angel he also was so because they meet him at fry's and he's totally bored with his job blah 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 and uh, i just think that he also needed a little more finessing about while he why he's there instead of just this this ragtag group of people thrown together in something very vague. Yeah, but I, I brought him up because after the the alien shits on the house, they decide to leave and they go to his apartment and then they're relaxing by smoking weed and then they have the Oculus lenses on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was a cute scene. Um, the highlight of the film for me is Kiki Palmer. Oh, yeah. I really, really like her. She does a lot with what really could be considered nothing of a character. Just her personality just like bursts through in every scene. She's so funny. Um, one She's scene in particular, because the alien has like electromagnetic properties. So like it, anything that uses electricity dies, whether it's things that are plugged in, uh, battery operated, cell phones, they all just die. So... They want to film this alien, but they know they can't just use like their surveillance equipment. So the cinematographer, the famous guy, shows up with a camera he's made that's like hand operated, like mm -hmm. crank it up. And when she explains that, like, she's like, I knew this motherfucker would bring. <laughs> I just think her energy is so, it's such a good match because Daniel Kaluuya is playing it very somber. Mm -hmm. Which also works, and mm -hmm. I think pairing them together made a lot of sense. But again, it would have been nice to know a little bit more of their family of dynamics. Of course, you get a you get a shot of a portrait of what must be their mother or who must be their mother on their wall. And it's like, oh, I, it's like immediately I want to know more. Yeah. I want to know more about what Keith David thought because she's a le Kiki's character is a lesbian. Like, I want to. That's right. I want to know more. The cinematographer starts singing that one eyed one horned flying one eyed one horn flying purple people eater song, which I thought was. And I, I don't know if I. If, saw this and it wasn't really there but right before michael wincott dies and he's winding up that that uh camera there's a shot of his face and i swear he only had one eye i swear i saw that because then i because then it was messing with my mind I'm like wait did i not notice he only had one you'll eye have to time? watch it again yeah i'll have to watch it again because uh, uh, okay so what kind of really didn't work for me is the ending because their plan is to lure the alien out because they've realized that a it if you don't look it in the eye, it won't, or if it doesn't see your eyes, it won't attack you. And then they realize, because throughout the beginning of the film, we see this cloud suck things up, and it has like um, plastic flags hanging from it, like a string of plastic flags. Mm -hmm. And then it eats a plastic horse, like that big horse, and it spits it up. So they realize like, oh, it doesn't like these things, and it probably wouldn't want to eat them again. Mm -hmm. So they realize that as if... If, if they drag like a big plastic thing behind them, it won't attack. So anyway, they have this super elaborate plan to bring the alien down. Mm -hmm. And right as they're about to execute it, like we're, it's made to seem like a reporter from TMZ is there trying to get information. Mm -hmm. And then that person gets killed. But my problem is that the plan is very elaborate. And they basically say they only have like one to two days to execute it. And... There's never any mention of like... I'm not sure that they've thought it out. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they fully thought it out as the audience. We don't know what they've thought through. And then the fact that Kiki's character at the end is able to kill it. She's acting as though she knew she was going to do this, but we don't know. And it just seems very far-fetched and convenient that she's able to execute the hot air balloon being released and right over where the polaroid camera because it's like a fixed camera in a well mm -hmm. so it takes a picture looking up 
I didn't like that. I felt like... I was hoping the film would have ended or the, the final act would have sort of culminated with them doing the test run, getting the photo, and then the aftermath of them getting the photo. And then maybe there's a final gag where the alien pops up because they didn't kill it or something. But the fact that they're able to destroy it so easily, I don't know. Yes, but again, there, there, there are so many moments where I keep coming back to it just being like, oh, th- what's the deeper meaning there? Is there one? Or maybe I'm just, maybe, maybe there is no subtext. If you just think of it as like a basic creature feature that has no subtext, then I think... I think opening with this Bible quote, much like Jeremiah eleven eleven in Us, it's like, this is an environmental horror film with biblical undertones, is what it feels like. Yeah, if I just reduce it to like something like Jaws, I think I would like it better. But because he's put so, he's packed it so full of things and I'm taking inventory as I'm watching it and I'm storing little things. It's a lot of effort for something that is very basic. And much like Jaws, they blow up the shark by shooting it because it swallowed the air tank. So, And then um, I think it's Angel's character. Uh, there's a poltergeist rift. Mm. It's like, it's here. What would you give this film? Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, I think it looks great. It was shot by Hoyt uh, Van Hoytema. It does uh, look great. That, who's shot all of Christopher Nolan's films. Um, the score, Michael Abel's, I, I liked, uh, who has scored Us and Get Out. And uh, Osgood Perkins also has a small role in it. Which Oh, and Donna Mills. She's that uh, older white lady that's shooting that scene in the beginning. She's from Knott's Landing. Okay, yep. You know? Yeah, I, I don't know. There was, there was a lot there. I, I just feel like Kaluuya... I feel like he, we just needed... We need a cut of this film where he, I don't know, gets to exude more presence. What would you give it? Three. I guess I would give it three. If I had paid to see it in a theater, I would not be disappointed. I'd no. probably watch it again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would recommend it. I think it's a fun time. I, I, I think just let it wash over you and just realize that it's a pretty basic story. It, it is, but I think there are elements that suggest that there are interpretations that really make this worth watching. I'm disappointed again. if I dig into it too, like, like if I try to dissect it and think about it too much, then I'm not as satisfied. But if I just think of it as like a creature feature, oh, see, it's I fine. feel a little different. I feel like I'm, as I'm thinking about more of those moments, I'm warming to it a bit more. But I think I'll, uh, expectations were also pretty high. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, 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 o